do do hey everybody just getting everything set up here how's it going on this fine sunday i guess well for me it's afternoon evening hello evening uh uk cj greece see i'm remembering all this Turns out the entire world is not on American time. Don't ask Americans that because that will confuse them because we are very Copernican in our view of the universe. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, uh, yes, last week we didn't stream because it was Mother's Day and I was trying to do my best to be a good son. Uh, so, you know, I have to make up for all those terrible, horrible events that I put my mother through as a child. Uh, which is probably impossible, but I do my best. And uh, we are, I'm here drinking, um, I'm drinking a bit of, um, let's say this is mint from my garden and bourbon and stuff. Because it seemed like one of those sort of days. So I'm having that. Yes, Count, you're right. I am a mean mother. Uh, we are um, going to be working on some new characters today. I put up some stuff here just to kind of go over, uh, just kind of go over what I've been working on recently and to talk about what's in my head. Cause you know, most of design is, is thoughts. Drawing is part of it, but most of it's thoughts. Um, this, uh, so let's go over what we're talking about. Let's go over this all. And you know, last, uh, I should say one before I get into this one last stream, I was sculpting in VR using medium as a concept tool. And I was going to continue that today, but I was like, you know what? I kind of am missing just drawing and painting a little bit. So I thought I'm just going to draw like a barbarian. We're just going to draw in Photoshop today. Um, just, just, I'm just going to start with some small component and we'll see where it goes. We're just going to start with some faces and see where it goes. We're going to, we're going to be in Photoshop. So sorry if people were wanting to, to watch VR sculpting today, but we're going to do some, we'll do, we'll get back to it. We move through all the tools. We're going to do some uh, VR sculpting and some ZBrushing and some Blender rendering and some Photoshop painting. But today we'll probably just be doing some Photoshop painting. I know, 2D drawing. Uh, well, it is on a computer at least, so it's not completely barbaric. <laughs> Although some of these scans that I have in here were drawn in a sketchbook on paper on thinly sliced pieces of tree flesh. So, uh, okay, let's go into this. So first of all, last time, we were talking about, um, I wanted to work on, so ultimately this is our goal here, this image here. This is just a rough I put together um, based on the sculpt I was working on. And I had this idea that there is, and let me draw on this so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I had this idea, I'm talking about this guy right here. I had this idea that there is this uh, sort of, uh, you know, this is just a rough model. There's a sort of ancient tree entity, if you will, tree-like entity above this, uh, this sort of hollow, this sort of hill and hollow. And it's got all these uh, faces on it, or it will, and they're kind of eroding. You know, they're kind of like dissolving. They're not fully intact. And we've got these characters approaching um, this tree with offerings. And these offerings are more faces, because what else, what else would a tree want but more faces? So uh, they're going to be carrying them on their backs so we can see the face designs to the camera, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't know what the fuck they're carrying. So they're going to be carrying these little faces of sorts here. And then in the hollow, originally I was thinking I was going to put a whole bunch of faces there and some sketching along those lines. But actually what I want to do is put some sort of weird mechanical heart or organ system in this sort of uh, thing. Like this tree, which is going to be kind of rooted down through here, is sort of connected to this whole hollow, this this space, this place, you know. So so maybe it can move around a bit, maybe not. But it's kind of this is kind of its area, right? So then, um, with all of those thoughts in mind, so we started. I started sculpting this, and then I was like, well, I got to design all these faces, and I don't, because I don't want them to be exactly like the other faces. And then I was like, well, I need to design who these characters are as well. Um, because, you know, part of the motivation with all this stuff that we're doing is, is world building, not just, um, not just, you know, sculpting or drawing. And um, that's kind of the fun part for me anyways. And so uh, I didn't want to just use these. These are, these are like stand-in characters, but these are based 
you know, on the other priests that we've used in uh, some of the other pilgrimage stuff. Yeah, each face needs a 10 chapter backstory, exactly. Yeah, because when you say world building, it's like people go full on lorgasm and they write all this lore, but then deliver like a really shitty story. Because <laughs> writing lore is easy. Everyone can write lore. Lore is fun. Anyways, so uh, the idea is then I was like, well, what are these characters? If they're not if they're not the same sort of like pilgrimage priests, what are they? And then I um, I thought of this idea that they're they're a group of people called the Broken. And these are really rough sketches here to show you like, like these are just like little tiny doodles. I'm in the working in the middle of the day and other things. I just have like a thought and I just quickly jot some of this down. So I'll share these really ugly things with you folks. And the idea is that there's some sort of, um, some sort of creature, some sort of, you know, humanoid creature that is uh, perhaps bound together. And again, we're kind of working in the theme of like, uh, tree roots and tree branches and bones, that sort of space, with also some bits of tech occasionally, there's some wires and stuff in there. And uh, so, you know, these were some of the initial sketches like this one and this one, and it was like these kind of broken shapes carrying things in their back, because I was thinking specifically about this painting, or well, what will become a painting. Um, and then I was like, well, Okay, but before delivering these faces, is that their only purpose in life, is to deliver faces to a tree? And I was like, no, maybe they, um, what else do they do, right? So then I remembered, um, I don't know if, if you folks remember, many, uh, many sessions ago, I was talking about lighting in Unreal, and I was just, and actually we we're exploring the modeling tools in Unreal. And I remember I modeled this thing here, which is kind of hard to see, let me make this a little brighter. Uh, and we were modeling this, or this little weird, Thing. And it's kind of, you know, it was, it was really block mesh, right? Because it was being modeled in Unreal using Unreal's modeling tools. And I thought, well, what if, um, you know, and I was thinking it was kind of like a spinal cord, but made out of trees and maybe there'd be like a little entrance here, you know, this was the original idea. And, uh, you know, these, like this would be the scale, maybe like little characters could come entering inside there. And um, I kind of stopped developing that. And then I thought, well, what if that whole thing, what if this whole entire spinal column-like structure, so it's not really a spinal column, right? But it kind of it kind of evokes a spinal column. What if it was even bigger? And what if it, it snaked across the landscape like we have here, but what if it was moving? And so that's when I thought, well, what if these characters were originally created with the purpose of moving this thing across the world? And it's, uh, uh, I'm just calling it the procession at the moment. And so you can kind of see, I mean, I don't know the exact scale yet, right? Because I'm not not totally developing it. But we've got like these little, like, hey, thanks, Matt Six, for subscribing. I appreciate it. Um, we've got these little tiny, this is like the scale, perhaps. And they're all carrying this giant, you know, pen out here, this sort of giant structure across. Uh, and these designs still can kind of work, or some of these where they're like almost like razor straight back carrying a big burden. I didn't want him to be totally bipedal, but I kind of didn't want him to be totally animalistic either because I wanted him to contrast this thing eventually, right? So then I was thinking about, well, what, what determines their shape and their forms? And uh, I know I'm going on a lot about lore here, guys, so I'm just trying to explain my thought process. This is, this is the shit that I think about. So then I remember these characters, right? This one in particular that, that I worked on in over a few streams, right? And this was also done in, in VR. Um, thanks, Matt Six. I appreciate it. Uh, usually, people roll their eyes at this point and stop listening to me. So thank you for listening. <laughs> so this uh, this character uh, was one of the what we're calling the three. Is one of the three, and I just sort of described him as elder gods comprised of bone and wood that are immortal but decaying, and their life force is bound through technology. Right. So then I thought, well, what if I start associating these new characters? with um, with each of these three gods, right? Because we have, I can open up the other ones real quick just to sort of show you. Let's see, I've got uh, Tree World. That's my current code name for this, Tree World. Um, let's see, do, do, do. I have them all on one sheet somewhere in here. I look at my bad naming conventions. All right, so yeah, so here are the three. These are the three elder gods of this world. 
and they don't have names or anything yet, right? Because I, I don't like to determine it all beforehand. I like to improv it as we're creating it. I like the visuals to guide it because we're not writing a novel. We're creating a series of images. So sometimes words suck. So this is the this is the one we're talking about now. So I was like, what if these characters are kind of each? Um, well, what if what if these characters, anyways, are somehow associated with this particular god? Right? Maybe he's the god of burden. Who knows? Right? So we're gonna close this. So, um, so then I thought, okay, that's an interesting idea. What if then these characters? I then did this real quick sketch when I was supposed to be listening in a meeting at work and I wasn't. Um, <laughs> what if these characters? didn't even have eyes, much like this god. No eyes. You know, not quite as extreme. You know, so maybe they'd have like they'd have like these little faces with little teeth or something. Because I need the teeth for scale and they're a little creepier that way. But what if they had no faces? Um, no eyes, really. Um, and you know, some sort of spinal prolonged neck that would be useful for carrying burdens. And then I thought, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to put arms carrying a bunch of arms? And then, you know, like, man, okay, could that be interesting if they had like eight arms? But then I thought, what if instead their faces and their spinal columns, maybe their entire bodies, um, all, um, all grew um, these um, bone slash wood-like structures that would be used to carry things. And they could snap off and grow back at different angles, perhaps, to accommodate different size burdens. And so I did this little doodle here. Um, you know, so somewhere under here, you know, you might, you might not see them in this context. This isn't the painting we're doing. This is just kind of back background, the thought process. Um, so you might not actually see them so much in this, but we would see them in this context. So then I was like, okay, well, I like this idea because this evokes this god here um, a bit uh, and um, you know it'd be interesting to create some relationship and then we'd have these sort of these sort of uh, things growing out of the head and various things that kind of see grow haphazardly you can see my serial killer writing grow haphazardly from head and spine and the um, so that's uh, so I was kind of interested in that more than just like these sort of characters um, so, all that being said, that was a lot of talking. Um, oh, and I also, one other thing, I also put this image up here because, uh, you know, I, when we started off a long time ago, I, I created like, the, I sculpted this, it's, it's something like this, the sort of shape. I sculpted this in a medium, and then, you know, we took it in a substance painter and did some texturing, and this, um, this is, this is an Unreal, right? We have a scene in Unreal here that, that I rendered this out of. Um, but I never really went back and created like this this full tower. And this is even too small. I want to like create some just giant fuck off, weird ass, huge tower at some point using these and other pieces. So I was playing with that this morning a little bit. And I was like, well, maybe this procession is another form of pilgrimage and they're going to this tower. And I can kind of connect all these ideas, right? Uh, and maybe this is the tower or the temple or altar, if you will, for this character. So you see, and I see these shapes are kind of kind of evoke some of his design. So it's all kind of connecting. So uh, we're not going to do all that today because that's a <laughs> that'd be a lot to do in in one session. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to end Photoshop like a barbarian. I'm just going to start off by sketching some face shapes and maybe some body shapes for these things. That I just want to explore this idea a little bit more. See if I come up with some things that I like. Because uh, that's a lot of a lot of stuff there. Uh, so Count asks, is it is it too obvious to have a tree surgeon character that tinkers with their techno implants? Maybe not. You know, I I am um, I do have. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can pull this on my drawing board. So so I've been missing drawing on paper recently. So I started this drawing. Let me go grab it real quick. All right, so I barely, I've barely done anything to this, to this drawing. So you have to, you know, use your imagination. It's a little dark in my room, but this drawing here, I'll see. I'll wait till my stream catches up. See if you guys can see this. This drawing here is, um, is, uh, I was calling it like the face, either the face weaver or something like that. So I, you can't really see it probably at this light, but like the idea is it's just got like all of these 
face is attached below it and it's kind of hovering. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe this is also the thing that kind of deals with those technological bits. But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to necessarily show it in a direct way, as in like here's him working on it. More just, I think I like the I like the mystery and indirect storytelling of just pure visual imagery versus like pairing it with words uh, for this particular series. So I think I think I might just show it and you know maybe imply it by the nature of what it's it's happening. Who knows? We could explore the idea further. But yeah, so I have this idea as well. That's kind of like somewhere else in the world. So, uh, yes, there's that. Okay, one last thing before we start drawing. Um, uh, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, let me delete this. I'll leave these up so I have like some reference, but we're not really, not really here to follow reference. Like this is improv, you know? It's an exploration, ideation. I hate the word ideation, but that is kind of what we're doing. Um, all right, I'm gonna make this kind of small. Okay, so I just also wanted to show this image for a minute. Um, this is one I did originally last uh, October, and because um, I started the pilgrimage stuff in October, and I, I think between October and November, some in there, I did about twelve images in that, um, and uh, I was I was really unhappy with this one initially, a bunch of them really, because I was moving through them rather quickly, where I was spending like just a couple of days on them. And I was also trying to learn Blender at the time. So I was doing mainly it in 3D. And so this one, um, this is kind of what it looked like originally, right? And I was like, okay, it's fine. It communicates the idea. The composition is about what I wanted. So it moves the sort of like narrative, if you will, along. But I, I never got a chance to really kind of dig into it and, and kind of give it the character I wanted. So I kind of went back into it and kind of I'll jump back and forth. You can see the difference here. Um, this the difference is just me spending more time painting versus just like, you know, or, you know, I mean, I, I could have, I guess, spent more time on the 3D side, but I, I kind of, like I said, I've been missing painting lately. So um, I kind of went from this to this, and I think it's still the same ideas, but, you know, um, got to spend a little more time loving these details in here. And um, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show that. This is something I've been working a little bit um, in the last uh, few weeks off and on um, in the evenings. So that's all. Thanks, Reed. Um, yeah, you know, um, it's funny. I know I don't really uh, try and create things that are scary or, um, I mean, I'm aware that the imagery is mildly disturbing, but uh, it's just, I'm just sort of like letting the world go where this world wants to go. And it's, it's kind of creepy. You know, I'm not, not going to show any like, mm, shall we say violence or anything. It's just kind of like, creepy and strange it's kind of, i guess surreal maybe a bit um but the, this image is part of the last three images of the pilgrimage let me show you those real quick right, then i'll promise i'll dry because i draw because i'm just talking a lot it's the bourbon um let's see okay so we have yeah so these were um let me open the smaller ones all right so, so there was the, the last three images of the series I did were this one, which was the, called The Gathering, right? And then that went to this, which was The Summoning, right? You see here, make this a little bit bigger. And then this one was the final image, which was The Three, right? Uh, so those are like the last three images um, I did in, in the sort of sequence. And then after that, you know, I kind of like worked on uh, I worked on a bunch of things, did some other stuff, but I kind of also, then I kind of developed these sort of like three elder gods that maybe perhaps are the three. And so then there's kind of like, well, what is that, you know, what does that relate to exactly? Um, and those are, uh, yeah, maybe I should just leave the three of them open. The, th <laughs> the three open. And I did sort of these characters here, right? And the style's a little different on this. I wanted to like introduce line as a concept. Um, so some of these have, if you zoom in, you can kind of see some of these have like line. These lines were actually are actually sculpted lines. They're actually uh, done in VR using Gravity Sketch or in some cases, uh, Grease Pencil and Blender. Just wanted to add a little more, um, I don't know, a little more line. So it's a little, a little different now. Yeah. What's up, Night of Holland? How is, how is Holland?
That's right, yeah, they're just gathering around the water cooler playing bocce ball. All right, uh, okay, so let's see. Lastly, one other random thing I'll show here. Lastly, um, I took these photos, All right? Uh, I like these photos. I mean, they're not amazing as photos, but I like this tree. Uh, you know, it's always nice to, uh, uh, I don't tend to work a lot for this sort of thing. I don't tend to work a lot from reference. I'm not working from reference is great, especially if you're trying to hit a certain target. Uh, I just like to, for this sort of personal work, I like to kind of just improv it a bit. Um, but I did take these photos and um, I kind of like the character of these trees and roots in here. So I was just sort of thinking about this as inspiration for um, the broken um, designs that we'll be doing today. All right. So, gee, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have nothing but reference on... Uh, um, yeah, this, yeah, they definitely have faces on them as well. That's probably why I like them. A lot of little face face like things in here. Totally, totally. By the way, if you live in California, you're required to say totally a lot. Sorry, that's how it works. The rules. I didn't make them. All right. So, okay. There you go. That's a lot of preamble. Uh, I'm not really heavily referencing this stuff. I'll just leave it up so you have some idea. Yeah. So it's not totally completely random. But I'll. I'm gonna get it out of the way here a little bit so I can draw her. Ooh, 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 I think I have, look at that, I have a background. And I normally just draw in grayscale usually when I'm doing these designs, but um, you know, I thought I'd put this more acerbic color in the background to draw with. There we go. Uh, and I think I'm just gonna start out with uh, exploring just some of the faces and everything. Um, I know in the past we've done some drawing exploration by um, by using weird tools like alchemy to get semi-random shapes and kind of using those to kind of like mix up our thoughts or like maybe using the quick tools and blender to kind of introduce some randomness, but I might just actually just draw today. I might introduce, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, right now, let's do a couple, we'll use a couple of different methods. Right now, look at this, I am using the simplest Photoshop brush you could, which is this round taper fade. Um, I also have this other brush I like to sketch with called, well, I just call it deaf opaque, but it has a certain, um, you can sort of see what it does as you draw. It, it removes a little bit of control uh, from you. Um, because again, we're not trying to like ink something, you know, ink comic panel. The idea is we're just trying to like find shapes and ideas uh, for these faces. So uh, sometimes it's nice to sort of have um, have some of your control taken away from you, so you can't be as precise, or you can't uh, make the same decisions you always make when drawing things. If that makes any sense. But I'm just going to do some rough stuff. We'll do some rough stuff pretty quickly. Don't want an eye in there. Instead of erasing it softly, I just, you know, um, my favorite way to erase when doing this sort of stuff is to just hold down the um, the tilde key, which sort of just turns whatever your active brush is into uh, an eraser. So you have to kind of like scribble out over over your face. <laughs> over the thing you're drawing. <laughs> Not over your face. You, you know what I mean. All right. Uh, look at this a little bit more. I was thinking about these faces. So maybe I'll do some necks with these faces because their faces without necks are kind of and not to the point of what I need to do. So I'm gonna do some roughs and then we'll maybe pick a few of these. Well, it's all gonna be rough today. Um, but maybe these are real rough. And then what I'll do is I'll pick a few of these to maybe um, develop a little further and I'll kind of like draw over them a bit, develop their language a little bit more. The warm ups right now. If you guys have any questions? Our ideas, feel free to share them with the group. Part of me also really dislikes the idea that, um, just getting started. I like the idea too, almost there being like this real 
like almost real hard cut off to the head um, or the spine, you know, since it's just because it's a strange choice and it's a uh, supports the idea that it was meant to carry something. The only reason I'm not really leaning into that too much is because ultimately, again, our, our painting that I want to develop first is here is this like tree thing. And so having these huge flat backs is great for carrying this spinal procession, but it's not really going to support what I want to do for this, you know, for this image first, which is where I'm going to start. So maybe going for something more like this, you know, where it's got a little, it's got, it can have some angularity to it, but it's, um, it's not leaning too much into that razor flat back sort of idea. This might be a little too rough or I want to start out. We'll see. I keep the brushes super simple for this sort of thing. And I'll do some that are just like, <clears throat> this is line. We'll do some that are just form as well. That can actually be a better way to start, I think, sometimes. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the tilde key is only a couple years old. I don't I don't think they, they added that a little while ago, but it's great because, well, so when they revised the brush engine of Photoshop or the brush tools, maybe not the engine, you know, when you make brushes, like if you go to the brushes here, you see that they have an icon. Like if you have really old ABR sets, they're agnostic to whether they're a brush or a smudge tool or a mixer brush. But you see the newer ones, so like, see, these are older tools, these smudge things. So if I select this, it still thinks it's a brush because I haven't gone and changed my tool up here. But if you select like one of the newer ones, like this is a mixer brush, because you see the little drop icon. If you select that, it automatically, see over here, it automatically switches to the mixer brush. And so if you have, if you've redone your brush sets, like I have newer things, like these are not erasers. These are like, this is a brush. And when I select it, or this is a mixer brush, or there's some of these have a smudge icon somewhere in here. Um, those are, it'll switch the tool. So it's kind of a pain in the ass because if you wanted to use it as an eraser, it, you know, it keeps switching it back. So the tilde key means that you just maintain that one set. You don't really need to have an eraser set. And then you can kind of just hold down the tilde key. It's a toggle. So you just hold it down and let go. I find that pretty fluid. I think you might be able to switch it to where it's, you know, not that done that way. But that's how I work with it. All right. Uh, okay, I'm getting, this is getting way too messy right now because I don't have enough ideas in my head yet or enough on, on the canvas to delete this. All right, so let's, so I also just like using, most of the time I just use a super simple round hard taper. I don't even try and get fancy at this stage because that way I don't even really worry too much about, you know, what it's looking like from a, a line quality standpoint. I'm just more focused on the design. It's a nice, simple way to work. And it's kind of, you know, it's not as like assertive as those lines. So it's a little less, um, I don't know, a little more open to interpretation, which is probably good for the sort of thing I'm doing right now. Yeah, I feel like uh, tools are definitely infinite. Well, and they get updated so often nowadays. It's pretty, um, it's pretty hard to kind of keep up <laughs> with all the tools if you know a lot of tools. And I enjoy using a lot of different tools. I like learning tools and switching it up just to see how it affects the image and the process. But it does just kind of leave you with, uh, sometimes it can leave one with a feeling of dissatisfaction. Like, oh man, I don't really know any of these tools really well because you're switching so often. Um, so I definitely get that feeling sometimes. <laughs> or sometimes you just want to like uh, go back to just drawing simply like I am today. Just let's just go back to um, drawing with a simple brush. Let's see what if this net came down this way. And for this stuff, I like to keep it kind of messy and sloppy because sometimes um, when you remove the control, you kind of wind up seeing something in the design that you didn't necessarily intend, and then that can lead to some original ideas, if that makes sense. So I'll oftentimes just kind of do something like this and then grab, um, I just try not to like be too precious about it. So I'm not even really working in layers, right? I'm gonna just grab another brush and just go right on top of this, just kind of, 
I'm painting over top of it, I'm not even erasing, right? So I might even grab a different color, just a slightly different color. Just kind of cut into the shape or grab something a little more opaque. Oh, we got our first bot today, hey everyone. I can buy followers. What am I, a politician? All right, we're gonna do this. Yeah, so I'm just, now I'm just kind of <laughs> switching to painting. It's going for form. Just being fluid, just moving around. It can be anything we want. And to some extent, there's a weird thing with these designs because they might there might be some like small variation between the characters, but I don't really want them to be. Um, I don't really want them to be so distinctive, uh, as in like in these these sort of elder gods were intentionally have like a really dramatic silhouette because there's one of them. But there's a bunch of these, so um, it's just another. Which isn't to say don't make it interesting, but just another uh, input into the design process. It's kind of like, well, like could, you know, like with this sort of face mask sort of looking thing, it's pretty simple. So I could have a bunch of them that have like slightly different variations and it would probably still feel uh, fine, you know, wouldn't feel like a singular character. Grabbing the smudge tool here, just kind of smudging it around. I'm basically just making a fucking mess today. And from that primordial soup, we will pull a design. That's the theory. You can use a smudge tool. It's also fun to use like uh, mixer brush tools. Um, get a really messy one like this um, and make sure you're sampling all your layers. You can slow mixer brush down, but otherwise you'll just be painting with one character. And I like these because I'm not not really intending to be painterly per se, but it, it it's removing some control. So hopefully we get to some happy accidents that we like is the, is the idea. Get out of your head for a while. Rational thought is overrated. That's <laughs> sure the gods, these gods are um, rather adroit with social media. They would like to buy followers. Well, maybe I'll just try one that's just a big blob first. Let's see what we get for this blob. Then we'll pull some shapes on top of the blob. About some ribs coming down. They're like structures. I almost gave them little T-Rex arms, but the T-Rex arms are so distinctive. I was like, eh, let's not do that. It's like hard to think of anything else but T-Rex. You see these little baby arms. Because I was going to go, oh, give them these little vestigial arms almost. I'll put them there, but you know. Maybe there's a way to do it that doesn't completely evoke T-Rex. But it does speak to the character design because they're not really doing much of their hands, right? They're holding stuff with their spine and head and back. So um, it kind of works that way. Uh, by the way, we are listening to the um, soundtrack from Mr. David Earl today from Headlander. So thank you, David. All right. Better not drink too much of bourbon while I'm drawing. Go back, grab a simple brush here. It's nice sometimes to get these kind of like uh, really abstract shapes and then kind of go over them and see how they could connect to these earlier ideas. Maybe I'll give this one bottom teeth. Man, 
Mantis Arms. I know, but Mantis Arms are almost too formidable, right? Because those are weapons. That's for beheading your mate, as we all know. <laughs> we had some uh, designs last time, like some of the ones we were doing in um, um, the in the medium that were like really weird, long, multi-jointed things that they were using to kind of like walk with to support the burden. I think, yeah, like this sort of character here. You see that one? That one, that was, that's sort of um, the, almost the opposite in some ways because that's like, well, they're using their... You know, and that's might be a better way to go. It's not. It's like they're almost a quadruped, but not quite. It's just that their spine has been carrying so much burden that it's almost like they've become one. So this one could have a, a big sort of carrying. Carrying horn, is that what we're gonna call them? Carrying horns, sure. Arms and right arm behind it's Trogdor. Hey, uh, I did I drew Trogdor recently for the Strong Bad vinyl reissue album cover that I did. Trogdor is not on the cover, but I did um, for the album sleeve on the inside. I did I did use some uh, did some Trogdor. I like the way this area is flowing in here. Not that it really is part of this, but. Too much. I'm gonna fix it already. Oh. We'll try a few different methods. We could even, um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Talking, talking while drawing hard, guys, folks. It's not a skill I particularly have. I am trying to get better of it. Thus, in part, streaming. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> Not doing quite a full design yet. We're just just looking for head things we like. Head things. You see, the idea is just to communicate the idea enough without obsessing over any detail right now. Or proper drawing. You know, this is very sloppy. But you get the idea. Go back into this guy now, I think. Shall we do a little different on this this guy? You're not good at talking while talking. It's true. Talking is hard. Talking is hard. Communication skills. Those are really important if you work in a in a team environment. But not necessarily things most artists really enjoy. Playing with this idea of a forked, not a forked, but a kind of a split neck in this one. A branch like neck. Give it some clavicles here. See if I make it a little, a little more. Let's not say we're using proper anatomy, but let's, <laughs> you know. Bust out big anatomy names. Sternomastoid clavoid. There we go. Got one of those right there. Kind of, sort of. Right. Uh, going back to that, like, 
just really shelf head as an idea. Just to explore that a little bit, even though I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 not necessarily what we want for uh, for that particular painting, but maybe it is what we want for the design of the characters. Maybe they go through several stages of their life. And the first stage where they're carrying the procession is like a, a rite, a proving ground, a ritual, coming of age, however you want to describe it. And then they, you know, eventually ascend from that and then um, uh, have a little more freedom because they're not like carrying the procession around the whole time. And and maybe the part of that process is their, their spine reforming or uh, their, their like horns dropping off and new ones grow that are a little more and they become a little more anthropomorphic, or I shouldn't say anthropomorphic, but a little more bipedal in their stance. You see, it's just playing with ideas right now, that's all. It's kind of carving in some Shapes. Anyone else working on anything today? Any creative projects you'd like to talk about? Share with the group. Well, I Selfishly drink some bourbon. You're drawing a weasel, as in, uh, as in like a politician or someone for marketing, or do you actually mean an actual animal? I know, I'm a terrible human being. Oh, when does that uh, debut, Deidre? The Cruella cosplay. Or is that a secret? Don't 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 <laughs> don't make me do, don't let me make you divulge any secrets. Next week, excellent. I saw that your PS Five was in in re, in out for repairs, which uh, sucks. I still don't have one. I still can't get one. I'm starting to get pretty animalistic with. <laughs> with this character and I said we're not going to go completely bipedal all right I'm going to make this one a little more quadruped you see I'm just jumping around making a mess looking for ideas that I like <laughs> well you know the thing about original ideas is in my opinion, it's all about execution. I think if you go hang out at any coffee shop near junior college, you're going to get like all sorts of crazy ideas. It's all about like how to realize those ideas, especially if it's a commercial project. You're trying to realizing them on a timeline and a budget and a certain number of whatever constraints you're working on. That's like really where the hard work is. Not that ideas aren't hard, but I mean, everything's hard, right? But that's actually the real hard part. Realizing them in context with limitations. Let's see. I'm just looking at these designs here a little bit. Maybe this one will be. I'm just, <laughs> I'm slowly painting this face out. It's getting lost in the <laughs> lost in my mess. It's all right.
these are getting way more quadruped than I wanted. It's all right. Let's just change the spine a little bit. What you don't? Uh, wait, yeah. How is it? How is it that you don't enjoy the sun if you're Greek? Is it, are you just uh, are you sensitive to sunlight? Understand. I've I've only really lived in pretty sunny places in my life, but um, part of me just wants to dwell in a dark cave all the time. So uh, I don't know if that's just the artistic side. <laughs> I mean, being an art, being at least a visual artist, is a lot of just working by yourself in a space that is usually got controlled lighting, so you can actually see what the hell you're doing. So you know, so there's kind of a um, inherently solitary part of the <laughs> lifestyle. I don't know if I'm going to put any robes on these figures or not. Like all of the other characters have these robes and I'm just like, maybe they don't get their robes until after they've carried the procession. So they're kind of like these half formed embryonic weird-ass characters and they earn the robes yeah minotaurs sure I mean can't really complain about the sun because it's pretty fucking awesome when it's great but yeah I, I hear you when I visit my friends in Norway I'm like oh this is a place where I was genetically meant to be which isn't really true it's genetically I have a fair amount of um, Eastern European and uh, Italian blood but there is something when I go there to like uh, Scandinavia where I'm like oh yeah this feels right Yeah, you know, what's interesting is like uh, this part of the process is the hardest in some ways to show and to stream because this is a process where everything is like rough and kind of ugly and it's more about creative play and trying to come up with the idea, you know, versus like, um, you know, demonstrating particular technique or, or how well one can draw or paint or whatever. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like scribbling with crayons in some ways. Especially in what's kind of an abstract concept like this, where I don't really have a specific creative brief I'm trying to hit. So uh, I'm mainly saying that too. <laughs> so you <laughs> don't judge me too harshly. It is true. If you, if you live in a place that doesn't have a lot of good weather, people tend to celebrate the uh, when the weather turns nicely a little more universally than, I mean, I've lived in Hawaii and California, so yeah, people get pretty immune to the weather if you live there. I have no idea how this anatomy is going to work on this character. We're not going to worry about it so much right now. Like I'm not, does he still have shoulder blades that slide across the rib cage when this arm articulates? I don't know, maybe? I don't need to solve that quite yet. It's not like, it's not, we're not going to animation yet. <laughs> I 
Iceland, I've never been to Iceland. It is really beautiful though, all the photos. I, it's like got such a harsh beauty. I love it, the way it looks. Someday. Well, yes, uh, hopefully I'll be traveling again soon now that I'm all fully vaccinated. The traveling and the orgies can resume. But yeah, I think um, I'm gonna be going to Norway again this, hopefully this November, I think. Well, fighting anyone who disagrees with you would be probably a traditional Icelandic way of thinking. So I think you're totally set up to live there. <laughs> Let's move our tree root stuff over here. The way this sort of stuff flows in there. Thinking about this over here. The other thing I try not to do too much when doing this, these sort of sloppy rough concepts is to zoom in, you know, try and keep it kind of zoomed out. It's really easy in uh, digital art, obviously, to zoom in and focus on detail, but I'm trying to just keep it <clears throat> back and not super detailed for this sort of thing. I do feel like maybe they do need some sort of robe so they don't feel just completely like animals or uh, undead. Like some sense of ritual. their own weather preferences usually when I have friends not from California visiting me in California they're pretty jealous of the weather but uh, you know it's different when you live in a place for sure this character hands Trying to try and play with like how human do I make these? I don't know. I 
maybe off here is where these sort of I do like just this flat this really bold just flat flat head All right, so if you so your favorite place of vacation then is Iceland, is that right? I don't know where my favorite place of vacation is. Argentina was pretty great. Let's see, I'm just gonna quickly. I'm not really doing colored work per se, but I just want to kind of. Maybe get a little different color in these robe areas so I can kind of distinguish them. <laughs> this looks like a happy camper, right? Sort of character that enjoys his job. What do you do? I carry a giant spinal column across the plains. Ideas going here. Hmm. Iceland and Greece. It's a pretty good combo. Nice contrast. How about as a photographer, CJ? Which do you appreciate more? I guess I've seen probably a little bit more actually of Iceland recently than Greece, but. All right, we've made a complete mesh yet. All right, let's go on to the scene. You see I'm sort of adding layers, but not really with any logic. I'm just sort of throwing me in here, keeping it loose. Let's maybe see what we can do about this character. Let's get, uh, let's get a messy brush. Let's get a messy brush. Who shall be our messy brush? Let's see, how about one of these oil brushes? Or as my family would say, Earl brushes. All right. Draw this one from the front a little bit. Different design, so it's not like I'm doing a model sheet or anything. Just gonna draw this one from the front. I think I want these branches to come out. 
use the mixer brush now just to kind of make it nice and sloppy. Mixer brush, when you sample a lot of layers, it gets really slow, unfortunately. Because it's kind of useless without sampling all the layers. But uh, for the most part. Yeah, they're super different. A friend of mine was telling me about this thing in Iceland where you can go on, um, I guess I, I guess, I'm not sure what it's called there. It's kind of like, kind of like backpacking. You kind of like hike across the landscape to, uh, to certain sort of camps they have set up and you have a lot of options or variation that you can do and you hang out in that camp for the night and then backpack to another one the night, uh, the following night and go for a week or two See all these kind of cool places? That sounded pretty amazing and fun. Uh, I do not use NVIDIA Studio drivers versus game drivers because my day job is working on games. And uh, I don't, in the past when I've tried, there's not a significant difference for the cards that I have. I don't have like a Quadro or anything like that. Now, Mixer Brush Slowdown is all on Adobe. Sorry, Adobe, it's all you. These attractive, attractive, well-adjusted individuals here. Gotta be able to make fun of your own creations, right? Kind of just wandering around, guys. Just wandering around here. I don't know if any of this I like any of this yet, but. You know, sometimes you just gotta wander. Never lived anywhere where it snows. I mean, it snows in parts of California and Hawaii for that matter, but um, never really kind of dealt with snow as a thing you have to deal with to live in a place. Which always seems kind of magical to me, but I imagine it's actually a huge pain in the ass if you actually have to live there and deal with it. That'd be my guess. All right, let's start a new sheet. This one's, yeah, this one's all right. Let's just park this up here. Let's duplicate this. Call this BO1. I could just fill this, but let's, um. Let's do something, see if any of the, if I kind of do a sloppy erase on it, let's see if any of the underlying stuff winds up being something that we uh, use for inspiration. Probably not, but you know, you never know. If you 
have the time to do creative play like this, it's useful. Even if other people wandering by your monitor are wondering what the holy Christ you are doing. Fires are have become a bigger thing in California for sure. Usually it just means you have to have some form of air purifier around. Alright. Let's just do a um let's flip this. Asif! Thanks, Asif, for joining. Hey, guys, Asif is here. Asif's awesome. We work with Asif, and Asif is a very smart and talented individual. Um, well, Asif, what we are working on now is I realize watching me make this holy mess, <laughs> it'd be hard to divine what exactly I'm doing. Um, I am um, working on coming up with a new set of characters called the Broken. And um, the ultimate goal of this, it actually started, I started working on this uh, many sessions ago. I started working on, um, uh, let's see. Oops, let me get out of, how did I do that? Whoa, hold on, my Photoshop has gone weird. Uh, not sure what happened there. Somehow I got Windows to zoom in in a way I have no idea how I did it. Is there a shortcut key for zooming Windows? <laughs> uh, that's what happens when my monitor is parked on here. Okay, let me just. No, no, don't close down windows. Hit help, everyone. I don't know what's going on. I have to close this down. I don't know what happened. I somehow zoomed my windows in a way I didn't even know was possible. Now I can't see anything. Uh, do, do, do. Zoom this out. I don't really know. Somehow I'm in a weird zoom mode. I'm gonna close Photoshop for a second. All right, no, it hasn't gone away. Uh, sorry, I'm spazzing right now. Windows plus and minus keys, okay. So let's see if I just do the Windows. There we go, we're back. Okay, well, that was fun, sorry about that. Uh, apparently Windows plus and minus magnifies your entire screen. I didn't know that. Um, so awesome, yes, I am working on um, a new piece um, that, let me get rid of this horrible feature that should not be enabled by default. Um, open this, so I have to reopen a few things. So many sessions ago I started, um, let's see if I can find it now, broken ref, here we go. This is what I was originally gonna zoom in on. <laughs> many sessions ago I was working on this guy right here. And uh, I gotta get out a mixer brush. Yeah, it's true. I should I should replace the Windows key with the Gam Jabbar. Um, so yeah, I was working on I started working on this piece, and this was like really a real rough thing. I'd like did a rough model, and then it all became about like delivering these masks to this tr elder tree thing. And then I was like, well, what what are these characters? And then I started thinking about those characters. And instead of just using the sort of priest I've been using, I wanted to come up with some new characters. So um, came with this idea of the broken, which kind of carry the spinal column procession across the landscape, which is kind of what you see here. And maybe later in their life cycle, they leave the spinal column procession and are carrying specific things to um, this tree, this, which is another form of God, I think. It's probably a God or a demigod or something like that. So just as, just in the, in the sake of, um, uh, just in the sake of um, world building, instead of just like developing before this painting, which I could do, that'd be fun to spend a little time to kind of like explore what those shapes might be and what those characters might be. So um, that's what we're doing here. And they're, you know, very rough. 
obviously. <laughs> Just trying to keep it um, explorative. Is that a word? There you go. Yeah, so that's what kind of all these things are. If that answers your question, hopefully. Now the question is, did I break anything? No, see, look at Photoshop still works. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of using, uh, keeping it loose and trying to explore what those characters might be. And last, last session we did some stuff in in medium, uh, sculpting in VR. But this time I kind of wanted to just do a little, some drawing. It didn't feel quite like doing that. Um, one thing I'll show off, which is really not a big deal, is that you know Photoshop now is a symmetry tool. And symmetry tool is not good for drawing, but it is good for design. And I think I at least at least for me I like it for design because um, it quickly lets you explore you know at least from front views <laughs> uh, ideas and shapes in a much faster way than if you're going to have to draw both sides. And I think it's not like sometimes people don't have symmetry tools and um, they um, they basically say uh, you know you can like uh, flip. You could flip afterwards, but I think there's a difference between flipping afterwards and watching watching the form change as you're drawing. And of course, you can make it asymmetrical later. And so I always find it really nice. I kind of want you want to hide this thing. You don't actually have to look at it. Um, I find it a really great way to quickly kind of come up with with uh, more ideas. If that makes sense, right? You can see it's very quick. So um, thankfully, Photoshop finally added an actual symmetry tool. Um, but yeah. The character carrying all the skulls reminds me of your early Mog Chothers. Which character carrying all the skulls? That's that's on screen right now. Which one are you talking about, Asif? I want to know now. Is it? You mean this this um this one here? This sort of like this thing. My um, my ill-fated Mog Chathras. <laughs> we're developing. Um, right, yeah, yeah. This this one right here, right? Yeah, this thing here. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. That um, that uh, yeah. I think eventually, as I develop it, it'll look a little more tree-like than it currently does. Right now, it's kind of like just bones. And I'm gonna put a weird like mechanical heart down in here, and maybe some mechanical organs. You know, because I'm still playing with the idea. And it's it's true with these um uh where are they at? I had them on here. Is it three? Yeah. Is this no not that. Not that. Um I'm still playing with the idea of I like the intersection of um natural shapes. Here we are, this one, right? I'm still like these all have like natural shapes that are kind of undefined, but they're kinda of, like bone like and a little wood like. And also wires, or like this one in particular has a um you know, this one has a sort of mechanical device in here, right, as well. So I kind of like, I'm still kind of trying to stay in that space a little bit um, for all these. Uh, I mean, not 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 religiously, <laughs> but like we'll see where it takes us. But I kind of like that idea for all these characters. Um, I'm trying to make these characters look, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know, um, associated with that with that, um, this god here, but not as awe-inspiring. Um, but I also, I mean, it's not really gonna communicate in, in this character design. I'm also trying to make sure they feel like, eventually feel like they're, um, and maybe that would take a, a multiple paintings to express this idea, to uh, that they're not, I don't know, they're not slaves. Uh, you know, I don't, I'm not really interested in that space. They're more like doing penance or it's part of their rituals. Um, so that's kind of one of the reason why I want them kind of animalistic in some ways, but I don't want it, I don't want them to be just a beast of burden, if that makes sense. Um, so eventually I think that's going to be a really fine line to walk. And I think with this painting, it won't be too hard because, because I'll probably put little bits of robes on them and they'll have like the masks on them and they're kind of like walking as in a more bipedal way. But yeah, underneath this procession, you know that like if I do this spinal column procession as a full painting, I might just, I might not even tell people that, that that's what's underneath it. You know, it's it's just like well, it's it's um, you see the little legs and arms, and maybe you kind of put it together, maybe you don't. And it's fine. 
like uh, I am of the personal opinion. I like things where it's open to interpretation, where things aren't like overly didactic and tell you exactly what they are or how to feel. You know, don't wear all their emotions on the sleeve. I know people relate to that a little easier, but um, I kind of feel like it doesn't stick in my mind as much. I kind of feel like I understand it and I move on. And for me, the stuff that sticks around the longest is the stuff that's like a little dissonant. It's like not quite right. And I think part of that's the mystery. I don't know. That's how I feel about these things. So I'm just doing some different quick little faces here. You know, still staying with the idea that they're like eyeless. They kind of evoke that particular elder god. Maybe kind of keeping the top flat again to kind of support the idea that they're you know, they've got to carry this burden. Just thinking about that. I could have we could have these uh, things that come up and curl around perhaps but yeah you see like this the symmetry tool wouldn't lead to a nice drawing in the sense of you know <laughs> it's very flat and everything but it's nice it's nice from a design standpoint Can make him smile Happy to be here. Sometimes you can just get into this rut of just redrawing the same stuff over and over. So sometimes it's like finding one new idea in each of these, you know, to, to introduce. Like we could use this one as like, well, you know, um, Yeah, you know, um, to Asa, Asa is talking, we're talking about like leaving things ambiguous so that you can kind of complete it in your own mind, which is natural in certain mediums, right? Like, um, like novels, it's natural because you're not, you know, you're not, there's nothing visual. And you, even if you describe it in a very specific way, people, it seems like people will often picture something different in their head and that makes it powerful, you know, but they, people have that expectation of the medium and games are weird because do feel like games talk too much but um, I mean my games included but I feel um, it's a weird line because you know in games you have to people who are interacting with the medium have to progress the game in order to experience the medium so like there's a one part of games which is like I mean depending on the type of game you're making of course you know, some games are built around specific challenge but uh, yeah, I do feel like games just like talk too much and don't have enough negative space. You know, it's all positive space. It's all like, go here, do this. Don't give up. You're okay. Don't, don't lose faith. Don't get frustrated. Don't leave this experience. And I feel like that's a thing you have to figure out how to deal with, especially if you want to be less didactic in games. But, um, you know, maybe that works better in games that have less challenge, but you know, you don't really deal with that as much in movies. Obviously, if you're a mainstream Marvel movie, all the characters just state their emotion in language instead of actually, like, depicting emotion. But, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting to think about. <laughs> I know why Asif's laughing, and that's not what I meant, Asif. Yeah. Some that really come down more. Let's do a handful of these and see which ones people like best. And I can try and incorporate that into a bigger design here, second half. Yeah. Just move those off to the side real quick. <laughs> Yeah, 
It is true. No, it, the pain is real. The pain is real. You can have all the ideas you want about like uh, about games, but it's, uh, you watch someone try and play your game, <laughs> and most of your philosophies go out the window. You're like, oh man, I feel for the player. I don't want them to do that. I don't want them to like it. It's, it's a it's a very interesting challenge. Yes, I think if I was independently wealthy, uh, I would still be making art, but I think I'd probably make interactive art piece things. Like we talked about this before. Or if, uh, if uh, you know. <laughs> Reed, are you trying to connect this to Asif's game? There's no fighting in the world of pilgrimage. It's a, it's a world of mystery and sacrifice and ritual. It's a post-human world. Or maybe it's not even on Earth. Who knows? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with wanting more games. <laughs> set real quick let's see if, let's do some that are just um let's try a different let's do some that are not about spinal branches holding things up let's do some that are just like brutalists that are just kind of blocky let's <laughs> cancel df game well, we have many I won't say we have many canceled DF games. We have many games that uh, that we have prototypes for that didn't necessarily become full games. That's good. Can't make everything. I mean, you may not feel it's good if it's your game, but... <laughs> Doing some blocky ones. When maybe this one will have a. Teeth that are separate. Oh, you're probably talking about you talking about the connect game. I think the code name for that was specs. Where you were kind of. Um, <laughs> please no battle rails. Uh, please stop. Used to be, that used to be the joke was every development team ever in the creation of humanity when you'd be like, what are we doing next? We're gonna do a fighting game or a kart racing game with our characters, right? That's a third semi development team. We, it always happens. And then now it's like, we're gonna do a battle royale with our characters. Codename specs. Yeah, that was a fun, a fun prototype to work on. That was like, um, it was like a, um, that's right, Tim showed that off at um, New York University or something, I think, one of those. Yeah, that was, um, that was kind of fun to work on. That was a, that was a weird experience. I liked it. That was uh, back when Microsoft was sort of funding, oops, I gotta turn off symmetry, don't I? Go away, symmetry. I'm just gonna quickly block these in so I can judge the silhouettes a little bit better. Again, we're not, I'm not trying to make these look pretty. That's my excuse today why everything doesn't look pretty. What about ideas? Design and art definitely intersect, but they're different goals, I'd say, to some extent. <laughs> Zombies worry. Yeah, well, you know. People chase the money. That's how it works. Money guys chase the money. Sloppy job here. I could have done this when it was symmetry to save a bit of time. 
Or if I really cared, I could do some sort of mask fill thing, but I kind of just like, uh, I kind of like the act of creating the fills. It makes me think about the form a bit more. Sometimes the best process isn't the most efficient one. All right. Well, pretty is relative. I use it like an artist, not in terms of, uh, you know, what marketing has tried to teach us beauty is. But I mean it from a form standpoint, you know, execution of the drawing, elegance of line, rhythm, that sort of stuff. That's what I mean by pretty, not prescribed beauty, flawless porcelain dolls. All right. So Austin's got some ideas. I'm digging the one in the bottom center. It reminds me of the trees you see along the California coast where the entire tree looks sort of windswept and all the branches generally lean as opposed to branching out where there happens to be space. Yeah, uh, you, you're talking about, actually, let me put some, let me put some, some letters. This is the, this is the other thing you always do when you're like doing roughs and you want some feedback is put some, put some letters by them. Cause otherwise people are like, I like the third one in from that. You just go like, I like H or J and here's why. You know, whatever. It winds up winds up helping. <laughs> as silly as that sounds. So Asif's talking about G. Is that right, Asif? Yeah. The kind of. Um, I mean, you're talking about kind of like the uh, like trees that are clinging to cliffs near the coastside. Yeah. Yeah. I always like those too, like cypress trees. Is that is that right? Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there is a, there is a, there is a, okay. So there's an e evil trick that you can do. If you have a finished painting and you love it and you think it's perfect and you're just trying to get approval and you don't want any random feedback, well, let's be clear. Feedback's good. Let me be clear. But feedback is also infinite. And at some point you have to like, you know, shut it, shut it down. Cause otherwise all you do is chase your tail and you water everything down for everyone's aesthetic which means you just make fucking Bud Light, okay? It's hard to know where that line is without sounding like a prima donna, but it's there's some truth to it. So if you're like, okay, this this picture is perfect. What you do, and you and you wanna like, and you gotta show it to say executives. What you do is you put, you put something wrong in the picture intentionally. You make a layer and you put something like this yellow pixel there. It's a stray yellow pixel. So then, when you show it to people and ask for feedback, and these are not maybe necessarily visual people, all they do is they see this flaw, right? This is an obvious one. It could be less obvious than this, you know? And then they're like, uh, yeah, it's pretty good, but this, there's that weird pixel. And you're like, oh, I didn't see that. I'll fix that. Um, and so then you just, you know, you turn off that layer and then you're done. So um, that's, the, that's the way to get it approved if you have to do that. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately, Fortunately, hopefully, when you're working with uh, most people in your careers, you don't have to resort to such tactics. Uh, I won't say that I haven't done that at various companies in the past. Not double fine, but it happens. It does happen. All right. That's the yellow pixel theory. You put the stray flaw, you put the intentional flaw to magnet people who are looking for flaws as opposed to giving you meaningful feedback. All right. So... Uh, yeah, I like G2. It's kind of cool. It's different too than, you know, where I started with like, I, I kind of liked, uh, you know, initially I was like, oh, it'd be cool to have these things, but it does make more sense. There is also this brutalist aspect to this series, right? There is this sort of like, like you can see in this castle here, there's these really extreme angles, even though they're a little more organic than what one might associate with brutalism, associate with brutalism. There are still kind of some of those like sharp angles. And this one has some of that. So then the question would be, if we build a design around that to carry burdens, what does that look like, right? And that's probably like leaning into some of those angles and some of those like split, you know, maybe it's almost like a, a split log. If you've ever seen a log, it's like carried too much weight. It kind of splits around the edges. So we can kind of explore that idea a bit, see if we kind of like that idea. Who else has any other opinions? 
feel free to throw them out. So let's let's just park this up here. See, these are easy. These are all throwaway. Nothing, nothing is precious. It's all garbage. Well, you know, it's all means to an end. That's what I should say. All right. All right. So let's just shrink this down a bit. And we'll just get rid of all this. You're gone. Okay. Let's grab. Let's just grab this. Let's just look at that. I'm just going to think about the total form for a minute. And I'm let me just picture it more in the context of our uh, of our painting over here. You know, where this thing's going to be like carrying something. It's got to be somewhat upright so we can see its back. Because that's, you know, it's going to have this like thing here, right? So. I'll just swim from a three quarter sort of standard character perspective. There's a few of them. Yeah. You think I should get rid of that errant yellow pixel, but you know that is the um, that is the minor note in the composition, sir. I can't get rid of that. Without some dissonance, there is no harmony. Right. There's a few different quick silhouettes here. Give this one multiple legs, maybe multiple legs and no arms. Let's do three. Let's do three, and then we'll draw on top of them, building on uh, the idea of G as a face. Look at look how good I am at saving, guys. That's my I rarely use work because I save all the time. What's this one going to be like? This one a little bit longer. We're going to go back to the flat back on this one. Maybe it will be a flat back. Kind of compressing a bit because I'm running out of space here. Let's move this one over a bit. <laughs> now, if we make the head smaller relative to the body size, it'll make the body appear bigger. Like its overall. Uh, your perception of its overall scale will be that it's a bigger animal. Whereas if uh, you know the head is bigger, it'll look more like a child or a small thing, or chibi if you're into that. Uh, so we're gonna make. I don't want. I want to keep these heads somewhat small because I do want it to look like, uh, like it could carry, you know, a chunk of weight. It's gonna be a certain, certain size. Maybe what I could have them do too, in terms of, we were talking earlier about, um, uh, the, <laughs> we were talking earlier about the idea of wanting them to have some autonomy and not just look like beasts of burden. And so one of the things we could do, I don't want to get too heavy handed about the idea of ritual, but one of the things we could do is, uh, you know, have them holding something in their hand that's uh, more of a rit ritualistic device. So in addition to carrying this, <clears throat> carrying this burden they're not just like struggling to lift it they've actually got like like maybe this guy's got some uh, fucking shrimp arms here so we get a get away from the t-rex association as he's got some arms but they're holding you know they're holding a, a thing 
don't know what the thing is yet. Right? So that that shows a certain level of ritual or you know, a beast wouldn't do that. It's tool making, opposable thumbs, whatever you want to however you want to describe it. So maybe do that in a couple of these. Trying to look like Samurai Jack character designs. All right, so we're gonna go, let's do this. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Mattis X. If it's midnight there, that must be your roughly in the UK time zone. Thanks for coming by and subscribing, hanging out. We'll be doing this every week so far. So maybe I'm kicked out of my house and go back to work full time. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm working full time, but you know, in the office. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, so now I got these basic silhouettes. I'm gonna try and do some a little bit of line work to add a little more detail. So let's, again, I'm trying not to zoom in as tempting as it is because uh, I wanna stay focused on that broad idea, not get uh, insecure about the drawing and then try and like perfect the details and the shapes and the perspective because that's not our, that's not the point. It's not our point. Almost like an armature stretched here. Look, they have orbs, guys. They have orbs. What are the orbs? I don't know. I don't know yet. be like crustacean like their legs in this case. Yeah, the robe definitely is a little, makes it feel a little less animalistic, which is probably good for our overall goals. This one is it is just to draw weird animal shapes, right? All right, let's see how we translate a similar face into this sort of shape. spine could have evolved to have these like weird little pads on it evolved constructed 
conjured, all the above. some of these small arms here, the praying arms, if you will. Delicate comparison. Maybe this one's got a, these guys are gonna form the EA logo. He's got the pyramid, he's got the sphere. The guy first is gonna have the cube. Not really. Don't sue me. All right. Drawn. What? What? Who? Are these legs and arms and things made of probably our idiosyncratic mix of bone and wood a bit of tech <laughs> drawn and quartered drawing is like conjuring right conjuring from the bowels of el diablo Let's do one more here. We got this other one to work on. What are we gonna do different with this one? What if we give this one more of a hood? Which, you know, maybe the burden is carried more on his back up here. So maybe we're gonna elevate the back. This like weird, like a camel hump. Go here and so we can have a hood that rests below the camel hump otherwise it'd be you know smashed with the uh, uh smashed under the burden i don't know if those are robe bits or hair or some sort of like uh <laughs> i want to say neck tapestry made of bone wood and assorted other erectile euphemisms well it is true that there is a lot of dicks in what I draw, but it's not intentional, I assure you. They're just really easy things to draw compared to other organs. It's almost like the... Uh, Iliac crest here, or is that the pelvic crest? Got this big. We could even put a little saddle. Maybe someone will ride one of these characters eventually. Got some sort of, uh, you know, to ease their burden a bit. Not trying to torture them. Just a little uh, flogging and penance, you know. It's a Western religion thing, apparently. All right. Is here.
it was have a wedding train. Let me make their legs. Let's just make them all the same length, which will be interesting. Change the design a little bit. Maybe they don't have um, traditional sort of like feet and toes, something more stable, which I guess would be really flat pads, but that'd be kind of boring. So maybe they're just kind of like, almost like telephone poles, kind of like tree stumps, like an elephant leg. space here. Clean this up a bit. It's a big mess. Go here, drop a little more. A little more of this in here, more form block out. Sometimes it can be nice to go in and like carve back in if you wanna do one more pass just to get a brighter color. Go back in here. Just about readability for these designs. Again, it's not, not a finished illustration by any means, but sometimes just to make sure people can read the important bits. So in some sense of scale. All right, what do we think, folks? Let me let me write some letters here. Let's see, we've got A. This one's B. We're kind of running into A. C. Who likes what? Anyone have any opinions? I know we're you've been with me watching me draw this garbage for a while, but does anyone have any thoughts? The things they do or don't like on any of these designs? Hannah likes C. Why is that, Hannah? Do you like the um, just the the inhuman like shapes of a uh, C? Clarify this a little bit. But toot, toot, toot. Yeah, B is a I think is a bold silhouette statement of of these. Anyways, just like. It reads as like rectangle strength, right? Triangles imbalanced, usually evil characters, square things, steady. Well, it is true that they could be variants, right? Like at least B and C are pretty close, so you could actually have, um, you could actually have. Um, you know, it was all kind of working together. It's true. You don't have to limit it to one, of course. Asif, are you still there? Do you have uh, do you have any thoughts? You had some specific thoughts on liking that sort of face design. A's got, I think A's, A looks like if there was a social pecking order, I'd say like A probably has the, you know, like he's like the, he's like, he's, he's the senior artist. He's, <laughs> he's been promoted twice or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got like slightly, slightly more going on with his pose. Yeah, I mean the harness is interesting too because it does give a. Um, it does also show a little bit like they're not being tortured, right? Like to some extent, there's like, it's a, um, a peril or item that's associated with the task at hand, you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I think C is definitely the most, um, like you said, the most unusual silhouette. So they're like perhaps the most distant from the sort of like standard priests that we've seen so far. I do like that one as well. I like, yeah, I think they all have potential merit. I'm gonna have some more bourbon, sorry. This year I grew fresh mint in my backyard and um, it is, if you've never grown mint, it is a virus and you will never ever need to buy mint again in your life if you ever plant mint because it's impossible to get rid of. So, but you know, it helps. <sighs> All right, so what about this? What about, let's take, um, let's take C and we're gonna incorporate, let's see if we can incorporate some aspects of, well, we could do both, but let, you know, we're not gonna get rid of this sheet. We're just gonna do another sheet. So let's take C and incorporate the idea of a harness into it like the first one. And maybe even, maybe even shrinking the head a bit I think I might like, because I like that about A a lot too. It's got the tiny head, you know, it's like its back has evolved for that. So let's see if we can kind of like merge some of these ideas together in a new design. We've got 10 minutes left, that should be plenty of time. And then, and then next, that means next week, what we'll do is like where we wind up here, and I might fiddle dick with it a little bit during the week, um, we'll go back into, can, uh, using 3D as a conceptual tool and take it to the next step and, and kind of develop it in 3D, which would probably be medium because you guys seem to like when I do VR stuff. But you know, we could do an, we could do a session in medium, and then um, or gravity sketch something like that, something very free form, and then we'll take it in a Z and develop it a bit more, and then we'll then we'll use it in our painting. We'll develop we'll go back to developing this painting. Although we do have about a million faces to design for that, um, which is fine because they all they all come back somewhere in the world, right? None of it's wasted effort, even if you don't use it. All right, so we're gonna duplicate this. And that is one of the nice things about having um, 3D as a concept tool, just because you're kind of like building out your your kit as you're developing these concepts. So sometimes when an idea comes back later, you can um, you know revisit it just using those pieces you already have and then just tweaking them. All right, so we're gonna chunk and Let's see, maybe it's probably not big enough. Let's see, what is, what is our image size on this? Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. It's all just quick garbagey stuff. So I'm gonna merge this and we're just gonna drop its opacity down and use it as a starting point. And let me save this, because I save, uh, saved into the wrong folder, hold on. We gotta leave the three and go into Tree World. You can see how many, I have so many projects going on all the time folks <laughs> it's too much always that's normal i think most people are like that all right too many ideas not enough time all right so then let me start by gonna, oops i don't want to use this i want to use the one with some opacity still it feels like i'm not committing as much yet which is good still early Give C a bit of a slope back and give it a harness to take back its squareness. Has the schedule drawing are stifling? Um, well, maybe a bit. You know, I think, um, I mean, my motivation with, um, with, with streaming, I mean, obviously I'm not a, I'm not trying to, <laughs> to make a uh, world famous stream session and uh, monetize it um, was just to kind of like one get a little more comfortable with showing process and talking while creating something which is which is uh, I think challenging for most people <clears throat> and then the other one is just to kind of like um, I don't know like I, I see a lot of stuff that's very very process specific like this is where you do this you draw your sheet and you model your thing and you take it in the substance painter and all of that is great and those are those sort of like rational processes are really useful in production, but I do feel like sometimes um, 
it's okay to wander a bit and just make some garbage. And um, one of the interesting ways for me to do that is just to kind of move things through different tools. And I thought rather than like trying to show, you know, being an expert at any one thing, it'd be more interesting just to show it holistically. It probably only appeals to me, but that's <laughs> that's kind of like that's kind of like what I was doing. This so to answer your was a long about uh, roundabout way of answering your question is like yeah you know certainly like taking the time to to, to try and explain what I'm doing and th and share that and um, and talk while drawing is very it's a it's not as casual for me as just like um, as yeah just doodling and 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 sometimes not having to articulate things because there is. I do feel like sometimes there's a danger that once once something has a name or it's been articulated too much, it it can kind of limit where you're going to go with it. And um, I think there's just a natural subconscious pressure where you want to appear like you know what you're doing in front of other people. So that means sometimes you want to you want to feel like I got all the answers. I'm just doing it in a straightforward way. And yeah, this you know I do I could do that I guess with certain processes, but that wasn't the goal here. Um, but there's still that like subconscious, you still, you can't help but think about that sometimes, you know, if that makes any sense. It's a very long winded answer. It's interesting because most most actual saddles, which are designed more for a person to ride them, have different. I'm no expert on saddle anatomy, but they definitely have <clears throat> different goals with like the some of the shapes of the of the saddle pieces are there for other reasons, human comfort or whatnot. Like there's a saddle horn to grab onto and things like that that people associate with saddles, which really wouldn't be as necessary for something that's a more of a carrying thing, you know. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Count. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we'll just use any excuse we can to um, sneak some SM gear in here. thinking about these legs a bit here I do kind of like the elephant legs of a where it's kind of um, just a big flat surface maybe a, little, a few little weird roots or something coming off there but I do like the longer robes though too because it feels like you know, it feels like he's wearing a mini skirt. Mm -hmm. 
something like that if it's a little too high, which, you know, is interesting. We could definitely go <laughs> explore their their miniskirt side, but not not what I was initially thinking. I think, but I think in order for these to feel like load bearing, they got to be pretty, pretty straight. I do like them being a little bent though. Again, kind of going back to that name, the broken. I kind of thought it was a cool name, but I like to name shit sometimes. Maybe before I should. Names are power. It shows, speaking of mystery, you know, it could eventually have um, just little bits poking up, um, coming up there, like a tablecloth. Well, that's an interesting thought. I think probably you're maybe just thinking a little bit too much about <laughs> the level of fidelity I have here, which is pretty low. I think eventually they wouldn't read this tablecloth, but you know, fair point. All right, maybe I want to make these a little straighter just to keep it, you know, it's almost like two... Uh, it's almost like two priests, you know, combined into one here. I can hide this at this point. Just kind of see if there's anything underneath there I really need. Nope. It's just starting point, right? I'm not trying to follow a specific design, just iterating. Well, you know, if we really want to read this tablecloth, we could put a bottle of wine, some cheese, maybe a nice apple on his back. <laughs> Let's, let's not do that. Yeah, they, these uh, that's actually the true function. These these folks are there to serve meals to the proletariat. I think if, um, not that I've done a lot of this with this world yet, but I think some level of, uh, like I haven't really invented like a runic language or anything like that, but some level of ornamentation on this uh, saddle-like structure will make it feel a bit more, uh, not just utilitarian in its function, you know, like there's some ritual or something uh, involved with it. <laughs> it's true. He's this he's the spine hauler. I think I want to make so I want to make this forearms a bit stubby. I want to make it a bit more tapering. Maybe they need to gaze into these, these, uh, these balls, to, to divine the, <clears throat> the, what the what their lord wants them to do. So they're holding it, you know, much higher up to their eyes than I had done originally. You know, I realized um, I've just secretly made a centaur <laughs> of sorts. I did mention that everything always converges to centaurs, and that you can't deny it when it happens. So we'd have to follow my own advice. 
knowing that it would eventually happen. Yeah, Clash of the Titans. Some Harry Housen action right there. Classic. Labyrinth, yes. Did you know that Michael Palin wrote the script for Labyrinth? I didn't know that until relatively recently. Henson was uh, disappointed with his script in uh, Black Labyrinth, or sorry, um, Black Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, <clears throat> and he realized the weakness was in the script, according to him. Uh, I think the weakness was in the audience, personally, because I think Dark Crystal is fucking great. But uh, uh, he got Michael Palin to write it, because Michael Palin's a funny guy. That's right. Yeah, and uh, divination is just a form of uh, social media for the religious elite. So there you go. They're, these guys are like the scribes of uh, of your. All right, I think I'm about out of time. Let me just do a real quick um, for today, anyways. Um, let me just do real quick underpinning here. It seems like it has some interest. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think there's some interesting things going on here. It might be worth taking these uh, images into um, into something a bit more dimensional next time and uh, developing it further, seeing what we get. Definitely want something a little Unusual, not like you'd see everywhere else. Put uh, let's put um, some bright boy here, some bright eyes, as they would say in. Planet of the Apes. All right, there we go. Roughs and roughs and roughs. But being rough is good. Yeah, I think it um, it does it does uh it does also make you wonder exactly what's underneath. Like I, I think I still feel like I need to integrate the anatomy a bit more in in some of this section, of course. But um, it does kind of make you wonder exactly how these things are constructed underneath. You know what I mean? Like what exactly is connecting these things together? You know, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. And um, as someone said earlier, we could we could still have very there's nothing. They say they have to be all be identical, so we could do a few different ones, you know, based on this kind of idea and see where it goes. Yeah, I might even I might even make this one longer too. So it's just kind of like even more of a you know mystery there. This kind of I think it I think I mean I try not to just uh, do the the lazy thing and draw a really long robe to the ankles. It's my Victorian ideal of beauty, but no, I mean, just, you know, because I was trying to work work through what the structure would be, but I do think it, for these characters, it does suit it to be, um, to be shrouded in mystery, wrapped in an enigma, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. I think those are interesting. Yeah, so I think maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do a few more drawings this week, but um, next week we'll definitely take this to the next step, um, going through the, slowly going through all the steps. <laughs> uh, yes, no, it's Terry Jones, you're right, not Palin. I'm sorry, I said Michael Palin, and I meant Terry Jones, because Palin wasn't a writer. Terry Jones is the writer. You wrote Life of Brian, right? All right, cool. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Hope uh, it was interesting to watch me... Uh, go through these embryonic stages of new things. 
And uh, I will see you next week if you're so inclined. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Do, do.